We are underway here at the Swamp. Florida won the toss. They did decide to defer. Grew up a Tiger fan. This was always his dream, right? To be the starting quarterback at Mizzou. He now has this opportunity. He's pretty efficient. Needs to make some better decisions on third down. But he's mobile enough. He's capable. He's doing a nice job for this Tigers offense. Nathaniel Pete will start in the backfield for the Tigers wearing the white. They toss it to him running right side. Met in the backfield. Bounces off one defender. A tough gain of about three. Prince O'Manielin with the stop. And Am Amari Bernie, their middle linebacker, does a really good job of this play. As we get a look at Coach Drinkowitz, who's done a pretty good job here at Mizzou. Call that a gain of four. We'll set up second and six. Empty backfield for this Tigers offense. Five wide. Cook is the guy they love. He makes smart decisions. He also can use his legs, so he is a running threat. Second and six, quick pass out to Lovett. Lovett has some space across the 35, has a first down. Ventrell Miller eventually bringing him down. Well, and that's good news, John, to see Lovett out here. We didn't know if he was going to play in this game. Was banged up a little bit a week ago against Georgia. Had to leave that ball game. But this is one of the best receivers in the SEC. Leads them in nearly every category. It's a gain of nine to move the sticks. Quick pass out of the backfield, brought down immediately. This Florida defense is swarming already. A loss of six. And you'll see 33. Princely. Oman Mielin does a great job getting off a block and making a tackle in space against the very dynamic receiver in Burton. Keep the man in the backfield on second and 16 for the Tigers. You can hear this crowd noise already. Cook, quick pass out of the backfield. He finds Cody Schrader. Schrader bangs forward, is eventually brought down by Jaden Hill. That'll bring up third down. Yeah, that's, it's still a big third down here, third and long, I should say, but at least it, it makes it a little bit more manageable here. About third and ten, but it's a situation Missouri does not want to be in. They want to be ahead of the sticks. It's officially third and nine. Schrader, the man in the backfield to the right of Brady Cook. Toski Dove, the man in motion, who goes into the slot. Cook throwing all the slant, completes. They're going to mark him down just out of oh, the man. sticks. That's Dominic Lovett. Where do they spot this? That is John, so close. It, it's, it's really close. They're going to give him the first down. Lovett does just enough to get to the sticks. It's an easy slant route. And Brady Cook delivers it. And that was one of the things Coach Drinkowitz wanted out of his quarterback, Brady Cook. He said on third downs, we have got to start keeping these drives to, to alive, yeah. moving the chains. That's exactly what Cook did there. Has to improve on third downs. His exact words this week. That's a good start. The previous play is under further review. The ruling on the field was... It was close. The runner made the first down. During the intermission, they said the call stands, so Missouri does have a first down, the first drive of the ball game for the Missouri Tigers. John Tripp alongside Dustin Fox, Lawrence Sisler on the field. Missouri coming off of a tough loss last week against Georgia. To all the team we talked to said, we got a ton of confidence from that, even though we lost. First down throwing, that is complete. Luther Burden with the catch into Florida territory as Amari Burney brings him down. And they're, they're going to try and get the football in the hands of Burden as much as possible. We all know the story about him. One of the top wide receiving recruits in the entire country. You see him kind of gimping off the field there a little bit. That, that's not good. He's been battling a bit of a high ankle sprain this season, which has kind of made it tough to get the football in his hands. But still, when he gets it, he's explosive. We were told he's a tough time going in and out of his breaks, yeah. cutting with that high ankle sprain. He's on the sideline now. Schrader in the backfield, gets the carry, tries to go over the left side. There is no room to run there. Tyreek Sapp on the stop for Florida. And there's Bernie again. 
from his linebacker position, number two, who just kind of comes in and cleans up this play. You give a lot of credit to the defensive line as they do a great job getting a push. And it allows Bernie just to play from his linebacker position down the line with speed and make the tackle. On third and three, they bring down their third down back. So B.J. Harris is in the backfield as Lovett goes in motion. Fake the handoff, quarterback, keeper, he goes down. Trey Dean, the safety, making the tackle. Now a little bit of a decision here, I think, for Missouri. They're going to punt, which is probably a wise decision based off of how your defense has played over the last several weeks. Try and pin them deep. Xavier Henderson is the deep man set to return the punt for Florida. Jack Stonehouse is on from Missouri, ready to boot things away. Deep punt goes all the way into the end zone. I like his confidence, and I think we see it emerge today. Lauren, good stuff. He was very confident when we spoke to him yesterday. Richardson looking to throw. First throw of the game on the money. Completes it across the 35. Dragged down at the 40 by Drayden Norwood. That's a great start, Game Justin Shorter. 20. Yeah, Justin Shorter, who comes in second in the SEC in yards per catch at 22 yards per reception, nearly gets that on the opening play of the game. Montrell Johnson, the man in the backfield with Richardson. Johnson gets a carry, makes the first guy miss, but is brought down at the 41 by Damian Wilson. Damien Wilson again going to get the start in this ball game. Does not look like Chad Bailey, their Mike backer, the starting Mike backer, who's been banged up, missed last week. In comes Damien Wilson, and boy, has he just really come onto the scene ever since that Auburn game. Coaches have been raving about his athletic ability from his middle linebacker position, sets the front, makes all the calls. Second and nine from the Florida 41. Fake the handoff, Richardson throwing over the middle, dangerous pass, almost picked off. That was Ennis Rakestraw, the quarterback, who got the first hand on it. And Rakestraw, who is, as the coaches describe, the, the ultimate hype man on this defense, does a good job settling into his zone, and I don't think Richardson even saw number two. As he settles in, nearly comes away with this interception, it's cover two. And the corner playing a cloud coverage there nearly picks it off. That is a break for the Gators. So third and nine, Johnson in the backfield. With time, Richardson steps up, throw, completes to Henderson, but he will be brought down short of the marker. That is Rick Straw again on the tackle. And then there was some pressure coming off the right side in Richardson's face. And all he can do basically is, is dump it down off into the flat and Rakestraw comes up with the big stop. So again, the decision to punt, basically where they're at right now, um, it pays off. They're gonna get the football back. A nice stop here for the Tigers defense. So Jeremy Crawshaw will punt things away for Florida. As Luther Burden, deep man, end over and punt, calling for a fair catch at the 10. I think it's going to be a grind for them to win this football game. They're going to have to do it on the ground. They will start from their own 10, faking the handoff. Cook looking to throw. Has a man wide open. That's Mookie Cooper brought down across the 30. Cook so far today is a perfect 6-for-6 six six throwing the ball. I think they're giving him nice, easy throws. And in this coverage, you know, Cook's going to settle in. Gets excellent protection from his offensive line. Has all day to throw and finds Cooper out there in a three-deep zone, wide open for an easy pitch and catch first down. Good start for Brady Cook. Looking to throw again here on first down. Now he'll take off. He shows the athleticism. This is what the coaches love about him as Ventrell Miller makes the tackle. That's a great decision to take off and run as you see a lane open up right in the middle. On the offense, number 55, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, first down. Oh, 
that may be why, as their center, Connor Tullison, number 55, is battling against Jervon Dexter. Watch number nine, middle of your screen. There, there's Tullison. He's going to kind of turn his body, and you see he's got the jersey right there. And uh, it's not a ton, but it's enough to get the call. And that, that was what allowed Brady Cook to take off and run. So that was the first penalty of the game. We back up Missouri to first and 20. And Missouri is going to call timeout. Missouri. Brady Cook ready to go here on first and 20. Florida bringing the blitz, handoff, and the defense times it perfectly. Amari Burney, the senior linebacker, was in there. That's the third tackle of the game so far for Burney. Just watch number two coming to your screen right now, and, and he's just, you know, Again, a good job on the inside, too, by Antoine powell Ryland. He takes the quarterback. The handoff's made at the mesh point, and then Bernie cleans it up. So a loss of one brings up second and 21. Cook, underneath throw to Cooper. And he is brought down shy of the 25 by Trevez Johnson. Again, this is not an offense that is explosive, and to be behind the sticks, like this, third and a mile. I think at this point, you're just trying to get some field position back here to punt the football. Third and 18 for the Missouri offense. Quick pass, dump down underneath to Pete. And Florida will give that to you all day long. Fourth down, Ventrell Miller on the stop. I spoke to linebacker coach Jay Bateman before the yeah. game for Florida. He is so excited about this linebacker crew he has, especially Ventrell Miller. He said he would compare him to, when he was at Army, to an Army cadet. Just a wow. great overall guy, good human being. He's smart, he's a leader, definitely an NFL guy. Yeah, it's so lucky to have him back in the lineup. Their defense is completely different when he's out there roaming from his linebacker position. Obviously, he's been dealing with a bit of a foot injury, was hurt last year, but it's good to have him back. So second punt of the ball game for Missouri. Punt fielded, down the 30, makes the first guy miss some room down the left side. Henderson with the wheels eventually brought down around the 20. What a return for Florida in good field position. Excuse me. I think it was Rakestraw who gets him down at the end of this play. I mean, this is such a wide open return. I mean, he, he's not even touched and you got just a bunch of big guys. I mean, we're talking offensive lineman out there and it is Rakestraw the starting cornerback who gets him down has Florida set up on the 24 yard yard line in their second drive of the day it's so funny you talk to coaches and they always talk about special teams in every game special teams comes into play in a big way on first down handoff a short game up the middle Isaiah McGuire with the tackle You know, it's amazing about Anthony Richardson coming into the season. Just 39 completed passes. So every single that. week, he is developing and getting more confidence as a quarterback. People forget that. He, he's barely played. He's a pup. And now he's in a new system, learning a whole new language, basically, terminology-wise. It is extremely difficult to do. Empty backfield as Wright goes in motion. Wright does get the handoff. Bounces off the first tackler. Darts past the 20, inside to the red zone, tackled by Martez Manuel. Now with the three pass attempts so far on the day, Richardson, we talk about him, he's only thrown 200 passes, right? In his career, so he's gonna get better and better. And 
Again, a third and six situation. This is an opportunity here for, for at least if I'm the play caller, a potential RPO situation with Richardson. Third and six. Richardson, quick throw to the outside, incomplete. Just missed him. I was looking for Xavier Henderson. You know, that's one of those issues. We talk about like the zip you put on the football, you gotta have a little bit of touch sometimes. They're just trying to do almost like a wide receiver screen on the outside, trying to get the football in the hands of Henderson. And he puts it out a little bit too far in front of him and a little too much zip. Nonetheless, I think Henderson thinks he should have made the catch. So Adam Mahalik will come on for a 37-yard field goal attempt. Mahalik four for six on the season. Good snap. Kick is up. And good. You got to feel good about that. I know there's no moral victories in any sport, but it's the closest thing to it. Trey Smack boots this one away into the end zone. Missouri will decide to take it out. Stopped around the 21. I thought his game last week against NC State was fantastic. Pete, the man in motion for Missouri. Cook throwing off the hands of his receiver, Luther Burton. And Burton knows he's got to catch that. It's right in his hands. Still some issues cutting on that ankle, but it's good to see him back in the game. He looked a little frustrated, though, with maybe the placement of that ball. Could have been. Nonetheless, I mean, you get two hands on the football, you got to make that catch. That was the first incomplete pass by Brady Cook. Started to be perfect eight for eight today. Cook making a check out the line on second and ten. A handoff to Pete. Pete with some running room. Across the 35, good run by Nathaniel Pete. Trey Dean, the safety, bringing him down. You know, between Pete and Schrader in the backfield, they've got a nice one-two punch. Pete's more of the speedster, but you see the patience here. Allows his offensive line to set up the blocks in the zone blocking scheme, and it just gets upfield. Really nice job, an explosive play for this offense. They go back to Pete, and he's met in the backfield. Brenton Cox. Jay Bateman, his linebacker coach, said he is an NFL guy right now. He could play on Sundays today. Yeah, very physical player, plays defensive end, linebacker as well. Wears the jersey number one. You see him top of the screen. Comes inside of the block of Foster. And a lot of times that's not a, a, a good decision to, to cut inside a block. In that case, beat him with speed, made the stop in the backfield. Second and 11. Throw out to the left side, Burden with the catch. A short gain as Jaden Hill, the cornerback, with the stop. You see a concerted effort to get the football in the hands of Burden. There was a lot of controversy a couple weeks ago against Auburn. There was some frustration. He didn't get any touches in that game. The whole wiping of the social media. And, you know, kids do these days, but he said, no, I'm a Tiger. I'm, I'm locked in. He got a good talking to from Dominic Lovett, one of the veteran wide receivers. And Burden is back in the mix, all in. Third and six, fans ready to their feet here at the Swamp. Cook, oh, no. intercepted, and is picked off by Desmond Watson. A pick six for the Florida defense. Hello. Excuse me, it's Jaden Hill on the pick six for Florida. Point is up and good. Florida with a 10 0 lead here in this first quarter. And Brady Cook is just trying to get the football, I believe, in the hands of Luther Burton on the outside. And, it, it, and it's, I think he believes it's going to be man coverage. And what happens is Jaden Hill sinks inside in a cover two look. And Cook has no idea and just just throws this out there, doesn't see Hill. Hill cuts in front, is off to the races. And again, what a hasn't played since 2020, really. Jaden Hill and, and has had back-to-back -back ACLs the last couple of seasons. Has been incredible. 
and practice every single day. Nothing has allowed him to have a setback mentally, which is amazing. First and 10 from their own 25. Cook throwing on the run, dumped down to Toski Dove. A dove, a good run after the catch across the 40 for a first down. Well, and to answer your question, John, really what you've got to do is you've got to respond. And this offense has, has moved the football you know, a little bit. They've got near midfield. They need to go down here and, and put six on the board and respond to that pick six and get the confidence back for Cook. Pass behind his receiver was looking for Pete. Six seconds to play here in this first quarter. Second and ten for the Tigers. Yeah, Love it up top. And I, I think that's the guy you, you want to look at. That's number seven, Dominic Love it. One of, Love it, one of the best wide receivers in the conference. Go to the ground over that left side again. Pete with a speed burst brought down by Shamar James. You know, I really thought, John, coming into this game, for Missouri to have success offensively, they were going to have to be able to execute their outside zone uh, blocking scheme. And, and right there, it, an excellent run, really, on second and long. It puts them in third and manageable. I think Florida is a little bit susceptible to that blocking scheme. We saw it against South Florida. Missouri here on third down, going to go to empty set. As they motion it back, back in the backfield. Before that snap gets off, that'll be That's it the for the, the first, first quarter. Quarter with a 10-0 lead. They hand it off on third down, and Short. they don't get there. Going to pick up about a yard. Shamar James, the first Florida guy in there. I think Missouri is going to go for this, John. And maybe that's why they were a little more conservative on third down. They knew if they could just pick up a little bit of that yardage, give them an opportunity here. But at least in this situation, I think you've got to put the ball in the air. They need two yards to pick up the first down. Now they potentially may just try and draw them off sides. No, they're going to bring them under center. Look at this. I think they're just trying to draw them off sides. Fourth and two. And there's the penalty flag. Jack Stonehouse. End over end kick. Henderson will call for the fair catch. At the 20, it is muffed. Ball on the ground, but a penalty flag comes in. Did they give him room to make the catch? They did not. And I think they still end up recovering the football. Yeah, they do. And Henderson ends up with the ball, but they're going to be a little bit of a Penalty yardage added on to the end of this one. Kick catch interference number two on the kicking team. 15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. As he calls for the fair catch. Rake Straw actually is sort of locked into the, the kick returner, but nonetheless, the call is made. Part at three and two, looking for his first SEC win. Trevor Etienne to the right of Anthony Richardson here on first down from the 35. Fake the handoff. Richardson has time going across the formation. Dante Zanders with the catch for Florida. And a new set of downs. A gain of 13. You ask the offensive staff this week, how involved do you get your tight ends? They say... We need to do more of that. And, and there you see early in this drive, getting the football to sit as Anders. Handoff goes nowhere. Arden Walker met him in the back. Offside on the defense, number 18. Five-yard penalty from the previous spot. Replay, first down. Hey, you take a look at the, the time of possession. Missouri has owned the first quarter. 21 plays, 108 yards, but the difference has been the punt return and the pick six. Let's 
So an offsides penalty against Missouri. It's a first and five. Burke, the man in motion across the formation. It will swing it out to him, but it doesn't get there. Was that ball tipped? It was. Dalen Carnell, the backup star, comes in on the right side and just gets two hands up, is able to bat that football down. Let's take a look to see maybe, if it was. Maybe it was not tipped. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it wasn't. That was just like a... I don't even know what you call that, like a submarine throw. Like Richardson just threw that straight into the turf. I thought it was definitely tipped. My goodness. Second and 15. I stand corrected. Second and five, excuse me. Etienne with the carry. Changes fields. Brought down at the 45 by Tyron Hopper. Third down. Third and two, I think Richardson could fall forward. Quick pass to Burke on the outside, lowers his shoulder. He delivers the hit on Jalen Carlisle. Whoa, how about that from a wide receiver? Well, and, and that's that's a big time hit. From a wide receiver who's a little bit undersized compared to Carlisle. Carlisle goes 6'3", 219. Look at this, he's coming in trying to deliver the boom. I think he ends up taking the brunt of that. Three wide receivers at the top of your screen on first and ten. Richardson taking a deep shot downfield. Oh! Incomplete to Jaquavian Frazier's. It's just really good coverage. You do have a flag on the field. On the defense, number five. Holding on the offense, number 58. This penalty's offset. Great play, first down. So the penalty's offset. We'll just do it again. You can see the wide receiver's top of the screen. There's some confusion here. And that's, that's going to be where you're going to get the, the, the penalty on Florida, then an offsides, and we come back and do it again. Coverage up there by Rakestraw. First and ten. Florida on the ground. A couple of yards on the gain for ETN. ETN, the very talented young freshman running back, getting more and more involved in this offense. Of course, I'm sure you all know his brother, Travis ETN, running back for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Good bloodlines there. Keon Zipper, the tight end goes in motion, settles on the left side of that formation. Second and seven. It's Etienne with a touch again, trying to get upfield, turning that corner. That'll bring up third down. You can see he's got a really good feel running the football. Good patience on the outside. As soon as he feels the defense starts to over-pursue, he cuts back, sticks that foot in the ground and gets vertical. Seventh play of the drive coming up. A big third and four. Yeah, and, and they're just on the cusp of, of their field goal kicker's range. So I think this could be an opportunity here, John, where you've got two plays to pick up the first down. Richardson pointing out the protection. Back to Etienne. And he basically got back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a loss of one. Boy, Isaiah McGuire there on the inside, as well as Darius Robinson. This, I'm telling you, this defensive front for Missouri is as good as it gets. I, I was so impressed watching the tape from Georgia a week ago. The push they get, and this is the you know, strength on strength, right? The offensive line of Florida versus the defensive line of Missouri. Who's going to win the battle in the trenches? So you're going to take a 50-yard field goal attempt from Adam Holland. 
That would tie his season long. Snap is good. Kick is up. No good. No good. good. Wow. So Mahalik misses it in Death Valley. I, I thought LSU had a chance to win that game. It's a long way to go. Cook on the run. Takes a big shot. Trevez Johnson was the guy who delivered the blow. A good pickup on first down for Cook. Yeah, Cook has, as they say, sneaky athleticism from the quarterback position. He can definitely go now. And you'll see at the end of the play, it does take a shot. Pulls out, does a good job. Doesn't try and force the throw. Second and five. Three wide receivers for Cook will decide to hand it off. Pete trying to stretch it. Can't get to the 45, but he does pick up the first down. Again, that's that outside zone. The stretch play where they're just trying to move their offensive line, allow their running backs to read off the offensive line. They do a good job setting that edge, and he pick up the first down. Numbers for Pete today, six rushes, 34 yards, averaging over five yards a carry. And again, I mean, this Missouri offense comes in, John, averaging almost 170 yards on the ground. That's their bread and butter. They go back to the ground with Pete, banging pads, stood up at the 46. Gain of two. talking with some of the staff in Missouri and they felt like this was going to be a physical football game obviously he said it's basically six straight weeks of just inside drill if you don't know what inside drill is that's when it's you know you basically it's inside run offense versus defense in practice where it's a physical situation that's what these ball games are like here in the SEC Cook throwing strong throw across the field and a good catch going up to get it that's Toski Dove yeah, they need someone else to step up from the wide receiver position. You'll see him matched up here, right here, top against Kimber, the transfer from Georgia. Dub does a great job catching with his hands. It's a tough catch to make. Third and one. What does Missouri do here? Hand the football off to your talented running back with your big offensive line, and you go push this pile. There's Pete. Lowers his shoulder and he does get the first down. Easy peasy. That's what you got to do. You got to grind on this ground game. Just keep, as I would say, I mean, if you're Missouri, you're going to pop one at some point. That's what they did against Georgia last week. I mean, it was like five yards here, four yards here, and all of a sudden you pop off a 30 yarder. Or at the, in the case of the Georgia game, you, you get the 60 yarder. And this is one of the matchups we'll talk about throughout the game. Desmond Watson, who is one of the largest human beings on the planet, plays nose guard for Florida and that offensive front including Connor Tolleson the center has to block big number 21 all afternoon ball is snapped on the ground confusion cook scoops it up what's he gonna do Throw it away. throwing it away what was that a miracle by Brady Cooks most quarterbacks would just fall on the football right smartly and, and dangerously Picks it up, gets outside the pocket. They're lucky no one was downfield. He gets outside the tackle box. So he, he just comes up here, and I don't know what Tullison was thinking. He just snaps the football. And to and, your point, yeah. Tullison has been so concerned about 21, Desmond Watson. Yep. Good point. Look how big that man is. Oh, my goodness. You said he size 50 pants? Size 50 pants, a 4X jersey. Pete! The hole just opens up up the middle, has a block, gets to the outside, at the inside the red zone. Nathaniel Pete has been the only offense for Missouri today. Well, that's the Tigers are in business. That's what I'm talking about with their running attack. It's it's you, you kill them four yards at a time, and you see the hole right in the middle between both guards. You pull the left guard, Delgado, kicks it out. Pete cuts back inside the block. Big time pickup. Eight carries for 64 yards already on the day for Pete. And he gets it again, lowers his shoulder. He stood up for a short gain on first down. That was Javon Dexter with the stop. 
Now, again, the concern for Florida, and we talked with their defensive coordinator, Patrick Tony, is, you know, Watson at, at his size, and it, it's 85 degrees, it's hot. We're like, how many plays is he going to go? In a row, and how many per game? He said, we try to go about four or five snaps, and he'll probably play about 30 this afternoon. Two wide receivers to the bottom of your screen. Bucks and Schrader in the backfield. This is Schrader to carry. Let's send it down to Lauren. Yeah, talking about Watson, we talked to the strength and conditioning coach who works with the linebackers. He's at 415 right now. They are trying to get him at 400. When all is said and done, they want to get him under 400. They get him on the elliptical. They get him on the Stairmaster pretty much every day after practice for about an hour. He also meets with a nutritionist after that. This is a guy who squats 720 and benches 520. He's going to get a breather here on third and three. Cook rolling out to his right. Completes. Another first down, that's to Mookie Cooper. And it'll be first and goal. And Cooper coming off one of his best games a week ago. Right here, it's a little dragon route, a concept where you bring a, a receiver from the outside in on almost like a little bit of a slant, and then you run the inside receiver to the flat. It's almost a natural pick play, and a good throw, Cook on the move. They got first and goal. Missouri, a perfect three for three on third downs this drive. It's now first and goal. Schrader trying to get to the corner, and he's in there. Touchdown, Missouri. A four-yard touchdown run by Cody Schrader, the Division II transfer. He is just living the dream. What an amazing story Schrader has been for this Tigers offense. His fourth touchdown rush of the season. And this is all Schrader. I mean, everything's blown up in the middle of this. And all of a sudden, he just decides and has great feel to bounce this to the outside. It's a good block from his wide receiver. But really, that's patience and feel from the running back position. Harrison Mevis bangs in the extra point as Missouri gets on the board. Missouri never even really thought anything about it when he arrived on campus. And... All of a sudden, he just starts making plays and practices. 10-7 ball game, Florida up. First and 10 for this Florida offense. Richardson with time, taking a deep shot. Incomplete, was looking for Pearsall. That was Ennis Rakestraw in coverage. Boy, a lot of contact down the field. You know, Richardson puts this you know, pretty much on the money. It's hard to tell. Did he get banked up there? I think he hits the hand on the helmet of the rusher. That would be hand to hand. Hand to hand combat, huh? It's Christian Williams, 92. So that's something to keep an eye on. Second and 10. On the ground. Good run up the middle. Montrell Johnson. Really good block inside by Ethan White, the left guard. Blocking down the defensive tackle and great cut by Montrell Johnson. Montrell Johnson, again, another one of those transfers, comes over from Louisiana. It's a really good Sun Belt player a season ago. Freshman of the year in the Sun Belt. Florida one for four on third downs today. This is third and five. Richardson pressured, almost picked off. That was Tyron Hopper who had a chance at it. DJ Coleman was the guy who provided the pressure. I mean, listen, Richardson's got to be careful with the football. And that's been one of his issues all season long. As you'll see the pass rush come here at the top of the screen. It's a good job by Coleman getting in there and Richardson just tries to force this throw, and it's nearly picked off by Hopper. Wait, are they Royal Royal a fumble? was a fumble recovered by Missouri. First down, Missouri. Wow. Really? We'll have to take a look at that one. Live action, it sure looked like his hand was going I, forward. I, I thought so, too. We'll take another look. Here's the pressure. 
That is such a close call. Replay official is Ken Switzer. Is the hand going forward when it comes out? Hey, to me, I think it is. The previous play is under further review. The ruling on the field was a fumble recovered by Missouri. Well, again, the ruling on the field is a fumble, so they got to have enough evidence to, to overturn it. The ruling on the field was confirmed. It is a fumble. So Missouri ball, take another look, Dustin. Yeah, again, I, I was not going to speculate on, on one way or the other, but they, they do call it a fumble. Break for Missouri. Missouri on their first play here. Go to the ground with a Daniel Pete. They, they must have seen that the hand had not moved forward at all when the ball came loose. To confirm it, that was what was surprising to me, too. It, it wasn't just that they let it stand because the call on the field was a fumble. They confirmed the call. And it had to feel like Richardson didn't have yeah. control of the ball as his hand was going forward. Second and four, burning the man in motion. Cook looks his way. Now he does throw it to Burton. Two men right there waiting for him. Still gets a good game for Burton. And for Burton, you can see that wiggle he's got in that explosiveness on the outside. Dealing with the, that high ankle sprain for him to still be able to break the tackle and pick up about seven, eight yards. Very impressive. It's a three-yard official game, even with all that running. It'll bring up third and one for Missouri. We saw they were so good on the ground the last drive. Quick throw. This is to Tyler Stevens, the tight end, and he does pick up the first down into the red zone. And we were talking with Eli Drinkowitz and you know, their offensive staff this week, of course. He said, do you use your tight ends much? He's like, not really. I mean, they're, they're mostly a... You know, 11, 12 personnel team at times, but they, they don't really throw to their tight ends very often. Just the fourth catch of the year for Tyler Stevens. Under two minutes to play here in this first half in the swamp. Back to the ground. Pete spinning down across the 15. Marked down around the 13. A gain of six officially. If you're Missouri, you take a look at the clock, a minute 20 to go in the first half. You take all the time in the world here to try and score and leave minimal time left for the Gators. Look at that time of possession. Just unbelievable. Second and four, design quarterback run. Cook gets by the first tackler, by the second. Brought down by the third man. Eventually, Ventrell Miller picks him down, but you can see the elusiveness of Brady Cook. No question. Brenton Cox, as you mentioned, blitzes off the edge, number one, and he's got to make this tackle right here in the backfield. He misses the tackle. You see the elusive ability of Cook to get outside. Schrader rolling to that right side, tripped up at his ankles. Good stop on the outside. That's Jadarius Perkins with the shoestring tackle and a timeout, Missouri. Timeout, loss of Missouri. They're second. All right, Dustin, here we go. 38 seconds of play, second and goal. Just one timeout left for Missouri. Cook will keep it himself, dancing but going nowhere. I think you use your timeout here. Timeout. Missouri, their third and final timeout of the half. Now I'm looking here at Dominic Lovett top of your screen the slot. I mean, that's that's your go-to receiver down here. He's going to come in motion. Third and goal. Cook in trouble. And he goes down. Now they got to hurry. They got to get the field goal unit on the field. Actually, Billy Napier, I think, is going to call timeout. See the pressure by Cox as it is seconds. one off the outside. It forces Cook to step up. And that's a really nice stop for that Gator defense. Now Billy Napier decided to call that timeout to preserve the clock. Yeah, I mean, never know. I mean, you got Anthony Richardson with a cannon for an arm to throw the football 75 yards. What if you get a nice return out to midfield or something like that? If you set up a, a Hail Mary opportunity or at least maybe a chance at a field goal. Before the snap, whistles blow 
And a half. Please reset the game clocks to 24 seconds. 2-4. A 28-yard field goal attempt. The previous play is under further review for the spot of the, uh, where the football was placed. They have After further it. review, the ball should have been placed on the right hash instead of in the right upright. The ball should have been placed at the right hash. It's fourth down. Okay. Snap is clean. Kick is up. And he got it. Harrison Mevis ties this ball game at 10 apiece. Low line drive, and he will boot that one out of the end zone. We'll have a tie game at halftime, partner. So Richardson will take a knee, and the seconds will tick off here in this first half. Much. Yeah, I mean, that was that was really the only offense here. And I don't know if it's the early morning kickoff, but if you're a Gator fan, you're hoping you wake up here in the second half. Missouri, almost 200 total yards in that first half. Start with a pass play. Richardson throwing on the run, completes to his tight end, Ke Keon Zipper. A good throw on the run, a gain of five. And maybe that's what they need to do for the offense to get some sort of rhythm here. Maybe move the pocket, get Richardson on the run, some easy completions to get that confidence built back up because again, only three first downs in the first half, that is not gonna get it done against a very good Missouri football team. They go to the ground on second down. A good run by Montrell Johnson. He's got daylight across the 40. Sidesteps a defender inside the 30. Montrell Johnson Jr., a spark of life to this offense, a gain of 51. Well, maybe that is going to awaken the stadium as well as you'll see him bounce outside, gets a terrific block, cuts inside McGuire, and then down the field, look at uh, Pearsall, he blocks three dudes. They go back to Johnson, oh my, Isaiah McGuire blows that one up in the backfield. They give a lot of credit to that Missouri front, they just got gashed for a big gain, they come back and they try to go a little bit of tempo, and they shut it down. The advantage for Missouri up front is that they have so many guys they sub in there. Watch Pearsall, number one on that last run. He's going to take out about three different guys with an excellent block down the field that springs Montrell Johnson. Wide receivers blocking you. Love to see it. Second and 14 for the Gators. Richardson pass to the outside to Henderson. And he is spun out of bounds. Here, oh, I thought it was a penalty I think flag. It was Somebody a threw something. It was a mouth guard. <laughs> I saw something fly. It was close. Every play, you see how many big guys up front sub off that front line for Missouri. They will sub in about 10 to 12 different guys throughout the game on that front uh, front line. And, and one of the things that Lauren had talked about with us before the game is the heat, right? I mean, the heat in Columbia right now, there is none. It's like 50 degrees. Very hot day here, 85 plus here in Gainesville. So third and long for Florida. They're one for five today on third downs. Richardson will take off with his feet. Just barely get back to the 30 on third and long, a quarterback run. It's going to set up a, a pretty long field goal attempt. Richardson. Richardson looks to be a little bit banged up back right up there. Absolutely. Feet. And that was the concern with running Richardson. Coaches told us he can use his feet, but they didn't want to use him much because of yeah. the back of quarterback situation. See, he takes the shot right there from Marcus Clark, 29, the cornerback. So Mahalik is now on to attempt a 47-yard field goal. Kick is up. No good. No good. He misses it. Jalen Kitna is getting warm. Missouri with the ball. Handoff. 
finding some space. What vision by Nathaniel, Pete, and patience to wait for that hole to open up. A huge run of 16 first down. He does a great job following his blocks. Connor Wood, 66, and 76, Javon Foster, both of whom totally take the linebackers out of the play as he cuts inside for a great game. 13 carries, averaging 7.3 yards per carry. Pete met in the backfield. That's Princely Umamielin. 6'5", 245, got some wheels, a loss of two. It is homecoming here at Florida. It's been a crazy weekend. All the streets are shut down here in Gainesville. There's like a, so many a people coming every other hour. They've got like 5Ks. <laughs> Yesterday was insane on campus. Second and 12, Cook. We've seen a bunch of quarterback designed runs yeah. from Brady Cook. They really have confidence in his running ability. And they do. I mean, on the season, he's carried the football 40 times for 147 yards. A couple of touchdowns on the ground. Laura, what you got? Yeah, Richardson is back out of the injury tent. He just walked out. It looks like he's got some fresh tape there on that right ankle. Um, maybe a little frustration on his face, but he seems like he's uh, not hobbling too bad down here. He's talking to one of the trainers right now and uh, just put his helmet back on. All right, Lauren, keep watching that. Let's see if he does come back out for Florida's next drive. Third and eight for Missouri. Cook pump fakes in trouble. Rolling out. We'll dump it down short. Schrader is stopped short of the marker. Trevez Johnson, nice job on D by the Gators. Yeah, there's really nothing here. The pressure comes from the Gators, really up the middle, and Cook's just trying to escape the pocket, does, dumps it down, and a really great tackle, tackle by Trevez Johnson, the star for the Gators. Nice stop. Stonehouse will kick this one away. A high kick, fair catch called for. Feels he gets that unconditional love from him as a role model and someone he looks up to. So it's a really sweet story. And I, I just loved uh, getting to talk to his mom, LaShonda, earlier and talking to. This is Trevor Etienne across midfield. Eventually pushed out of bounds. Lauren, thank you for that amazing story. This is his brother, Corey, in the stands next to his mom, his family, loving it. Etienne rips off a huge run there. Yeah, big time run here for Trevor Etienne. The young freshman just kind of on the verge of breaking out. We talked with Billy Napier and, and Rob Sale, their offensive coordinator this week. They said they love what this guy brings to the table. Highly recruited prospect out of Louisiana. A gain of 39. They go back to the ground with ETN. Can't sidestep that tackle. That's Tyron Hopper. Let's send it back down to Lauren. And I actually walked up in the stands earlier. I was telling you about Corey, and I just went and waved at him, said hello to him. And apparently he asked uh, big brother Anthony to take him to the gym this week. So what did Anthony do? Well, he just laid on the floor while his little brother lifted weights, clanged him around, gave him a little <laughs> advice, which was fun. But his mom said that it's really interesting that sometimes Corey acts like the big brother because he's got to protect Anthony when all yeah. that outside noise gets in the way. What a great story that is, Lauren. Good stuff. The local kid going home for some home cooked meals. I wouldn't mind that either. Man, mama down the road 10 minutes. You kidding me? Second and 10. Be there every night. Richardson looking to throw. Throwing deep. Got his man. Justin Shorter. No, no, no. He didn't, he didn't hang on. on. He didn't, he didn't hang, hang on. on. And he might have been out of bounds as well as he comes down. It's hard to tell. What a throw, though, by Richardson. Just puts this, I mean, this is a pretty ball. He does get the foot in bounds, but he doesn't maintain possession. Oh, through the ground. Wow. That would have been a huge conversion. Would have been a 32-yard pickup. Instead, it brings up third and nine for the Florida offense. This is Etienne sidestepping. 
trying to fight for the marker, pushing. That looked like it would have been a gain of one. It turned out to be a gain of eight or nine. What great patience here by ETN to bounce this outside. And what this does, this allows Florida to go for this now. They would have punted had they been stopped, you know, where they were, where the line, the line of scrimmage was previously. But now this gives them an opportunity here on fourth and about two, two and yeah, let's call it two. Florida's offense is going to stay on the field. They do go for fourth downs a lot. Fourth and two under center. Now Richardson's just trying to draw them off right now. Will they run a play? They yes, do. they will. The toss. A late timeout by Billy Napier. They're first. Florida is eight for 12 on fourth downs this season. Fourth and two. Richardson can step up and he does pick up the first down. Still on his feet. Daylight ahead. Makes a cut at the five. Brought down at the three. Anthony Richardson, he's 6'4, 240, and he can move. A gain of 33 on fourth down. And they'll go tempo here. And a little bit of confusion by the Missouri defense. Johnson plunging forward, and he's in there! Touchdown, Florida! A three-yard touchdown run by Montrell Johnson, and Florida retakes the lead. Out the gate, and Richardson makes a good decision. This goes to the fourth and two play. He drops back, he's looking out to the flat. There's nothing there, nothing over the middle. He feels kind of the, the, the defense drift apart takes off for 33 yards and then they go tempo some confusion on the de defensive side for missouri and they plunge forward 82 yard drive by the gators it's just six plays we talked about it in the over the open of the second half where's the offense they were anemic in the first half couldn't do anything now this is a heck of a drive richardson shows you what he can do with his legs takes off for 33 sets it up first and goal and then Montrell Johnson caps off the drive, 17-10. Two-yard run, and then Johnson capped it off with a three-yard touchdown score. Florida with a 17-10 lead. How do the Tigers respond here? Cook, a strong throw complete over the middle. That's to Luther Burden, and he stays down after the catch. And every time Burden gets the football, it seems like he's just completely favoring that ankle and we know he's been battling the high ankle sprain Dustin let's take another look at this catch by Burden it's a good throw I think is that yeah right there his ankle gets rolled up on Jaden Hill the cornerback who's in coverage So as Miller laid the hit on Cook. So a new set of downs for the Tigers offense. Under seven minutes to play here in this third quarter. Handoff. Cut back up the middle by Pete, and he is chopped down by Ventrell Miller. A gain of two. Ventrell Miller makes such a difference on this defense, especially against the run, John. I mean, this is a great stat. When he plays, they hold their opponents at 4.5 yards per carry. When he's off the field, it's six yards a carry. He makes the difference for this defense. There's no question. A senior from Lakeland, Florida. Coaches couldn't speak highly enough about him. Everyone loves him on this Florida team. Second and eight. Cook, strong throw, competes. That's Toski Dove to the 45. Another first down for Missouri. That's a really good throw by Brady Cook in his own coverage. And uh, you, you can see Toski kind of double clutches it. He's like, I got to secure this catch because it's going to be a first down. Nice pitch and catch there. Gain of 14. Cook will step up as the pocket collapses. We'll gain a couple yards there as Chris McClellan with the tackle for Florida. McClellan's one of those young freshmen 
out of Oklahoma. Big kid, 6'3", 305. And you talk about some of the young guys here for this defense. They need to get in, involved. They've got some young, talented freshmen at all levels of their defense that are starting to see more and more action. Second down, they go to the ground with Schrader. Tripped up on the outside by Miller, but even to get to the edge, he shows you what kind of speed he has. I, I'm impressed by both players there, both Schrader to, to break out, to get on the perimeter, and then to watch 51 Miller. I mean, he is the prototypical NFL linebacker. You talk about running sideline to sideline. I mean, this guy does it all. He's the best leader on their defense. They're a different deal defensively when 51's on the field. Today, Missouri is 40% on third down. Third and five, here comes the blitz. Strong throw by Cook, completes it. Dominic, love it. Cook stood in there with the pressure and delivered a strike. Yeah, this has been probably the most impressive drive by Brady Cook of the afternoon. Multiple third down conversions for him to stand in the pocket and then to find his, his top target, Dominic Lovett, right over the middle, just beyond the sticks. The crowd's just starting to get into it, too, on these third downs, and then all of a sudden, Brady Cook, Brady Cook quiets the crowd. A gain of six. On first down, they go to Pete, and he gets a gain of two up the middle before he is stopped by a bunch of blue jerseys. Guys, I want to talk about those wide receivers. I want to talk about those wide receivers. Luther Burton is still in the tent right now working on that ankle. Obviously, uh, uh, something he came into this week struggling with. But Dominic Lovett, same issue, didn't practice this week, and they weren't optimistic he'd be able to go. And Coach Drinkwood said this team is so different. It hums at a different speed when you've got both of those receivers out on this football field. 100% more, and that pass is incomplete to Pete. And when we asked Coach Drinkwitz about Lovett, he said he is the most explosive receiver in the SEC, providing he's healthy. Yeah, and, and he's not. Um, but you still look at like what he did a week ago against the Georgia Bulldogs. You know, that's a really talented defense. He had six for 84 in that game, and you can you can see when this guy is on his game and 100% healthy, he can take the top off of defense. He catches everything. He'll be playing on Sundays. Another third and long for this Missouri offense as Lovett goes in motion. Cook, he will try to get it himself. He's scrambling, and he will have the first down. I'm telling you, just sneaky enough when he gets outside the pocket, shows off that speed. You know, he's a really good athlete, played multiple sports in, in high school. Looking down the field, nothing there. It's a really good job stepping up. And the next little pump fake down the field, about 10 yards across the line of scrimmage, pick up the first down. This is a really nice drive. Nine plays, 55 yards. And it would be a heck of a response if they can get six. It was third and long, and then Cook picked up 12 with his legs. They go to Pete across the formation. He is brought down after a gain of three. As the clock ticks down under three minutes to play in this first uh, third quarter, Ventrell Miller again. Dude, just, just say his name every time, time you make a tackle. This guy is everywhere for this Gators defense. My goodness. Inside the red zone for Missouri. Second and seven. Cook, changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Handoff is to Pete. He bangs forward, a gain of a couple. Gets to the 16. Well, third and six. This has been the Brady Cook money down. Third down has been really good to the Tigers on this drive. And for Pete, he is now over 800 yards rushing on the day. 18 carries, a career high. I'd say 50% on third down is pretty good. Six for 12 so far for the Tigers. None bigger than this. They're 
perfect two for two on third downs this drive. They need to get six. They need to get to the 10-yard line. Cook. Picked off! He threw it into coverage. It was a tight window in Jaden Hill as his second interception of the day. Second big mistake of the day for Cook, and he's had, listen, this drive, he was nearly perfect. Throws this behind his intended target, Dove, and Jaden Hill comes up with his second interception of the day. This is man coverage, he's working against Dove, works to the inside, Dove can't get the leverage. Hill, second pick, second turnover. And give a little credit, too, to, to Ventrell Miller, because he's the one that shoves Love it down in the flat. On first down, they go to the ground. The ball does come out, but it was after the whistle blew, so the runner was ruled dead. Gain of four. And Quan Wright, a good gain on first down. Under a minute to play here in this third quarter, it feels like Florida starting to take control back of this game. It does. I mean, especially with, with the last offensive drive, but you have to, to remember, this Missouri defense is very, very talented, and there's a long way to go, and it's a one-possession game. Second and six. Right. Tobin, the left side, puts down his helmet across the 20 for a first down. What a great block on the outside by Keon Zipper, their tight end. He seals this thing off and allows Wright to break outside. What a tremendous run. And now you, you talked about it. A first down, you're going to the fourth quarter. A little Tom Petty time. Third and five, shorter the man in motion for Florida. Richardson, empty backfield, on the run. Will keep it himself, puts on the brakes. It is right and at it the close. It is very close. And, and that's the challenge you run into if you're Missouri. I mean, you want to play man coverage on third and, third and medium, I should say. And that's what they do. Well, all the defenders' backs are to the quarterback, and Richardson is able to take off and run for this. And there may have been a face mask there. Personal foul, face mask on the defense. So that settles that. Here's the personal foul at the end of the play. It's McGuire, nine, who comes in there and, and gets his hand around the helmet. As the official said, that is the same as the face mask. So 15 yards and a, a big, pretty big br uh, break there for the Gators offense. For Missouri, that is their fifth penalty of the day, totaling 50 yards. Florida has not had a single penalty yet today. On the ground with Johnson. He's got some blocks, making another cut to the outside across the 25, inside the red zone, brought down at the 16. Montrell Johnson, and Florida's got the ground game working now. Boy, Montrell Johnson shows off some really elusive moves, especially at the end of this run. Once he breaks through the initial contact here at the line of scrimmage, you'll see Ennis Rakestraw, number two, he just gets turned around like three different times and still can't get Johnson on the ground. This guy, as the coaches said, Rob Sale, their offensive coordinator, Montrell Johnson just looks like an SEC back. It's first and 10 from the 16. Take the handoff, Richardson. Just does scoot out of bounds, a short gain. Trajan Jeffcoat was the man pursuing him and getting out of bounds. I was impressed. I mean, Trajan Jeffcoat at 6'4", 270, is able to run down Richardson. I mean, Richardson's a legit 4'5 now, maybe even 4'4", depending on 
the day of the week, so you just go back up. I think Lauren just invented a new weather term. Melt your face Melt off. Melt your face off, I like that. Second and five. Going to the ground, Johnson sidestepping, gets to the 10. That'll bring up third down. Absolutely critical here for Missouri to try and, and hold Florida to a field goal. And the way that kind of both offenses have been here in, in this game, like it's been long drives, right? I mean, you look at the clock, 11.30 to go in the ball game. I don't even know if Missouri could, could get two possessions. This is the ninth play of this drive. Third and three. They've got to get to the six-yard line. Richardson trying to find a man in the end zone. Touchdown, Florida! Ricky Pearsall finds himself open for the touchdown grab. Nine-yard TD connection. Their stud wide receiver, the transfer from Arizona State, had a big touchdown run a week ago. They've got to find ways to get the football in his hands, and they do it on the move. He beats his man in coverage, Rake Straw, to the back of the end zone, and that's a dime delivered by Anthony Richardson. What a drive by Florida. Nine plays, 91 yards, extra point is good by Mahalik. It's a 14-point swing, too. I mean, you, you think about it, Missouri's going in to potentially get points. They throw the interception. There's a look at Pearsall, back of the end zone. Great throw on the move by Anthony Richardson. And you called it, partner, a statement drive by the Gators. A 14-point lead for the Gators. This is a pivotal drive for Missouri in the offense. He has been banged up coming into this game. He is a huge piece of this Tigers offense. Well, you said it, partner. A vital drive for the Tigers. Cook pressured, avoids the rush, but can't get by your man, Ventrell Miller. My goodness, he's everywhere. He is everywhere on this defense. My goodness. Just as it appeared that Brady Cook was going to escape this pressure, and run for a first down, all of a sudden 51 right there is going to come into your screen, gets off a block, makes a shoestring tackle for about a yard gain. That's a huge stop by Ventrell Miller. Here comes the blitz again, quick throw to the outside is complete to Cooper. Cooper still on his fleet into Florida territory. A good run after the catch by Mookie Cooper. Oh, and that's exactly what Missouri needs. They've got to have some chunk plays on this drive, John. They don't have time. You're down 14 points. You've got to find ways to get the football down the field. He's wide open. My goodness, there's not a defender within 10 yards of him. A gain of 28. Hand off to the right side. And Schrader's going to be stopped for a loss of one. Well, we talked about Desmond Watson. He doesn't make the tackle on this play, but he makes the play. I mean, he explodes into the backfield. You'll see 21 right there, the big fella. Watch his get off. Just boom, right through the backfield. And he forces Schrader to bounce it outside and allow Ventrell Miller and company to make the stop. Cook is checking his protection at the line of scrimmage. Second and 11, Florida, they've been dialing up the blitz. They bring the pressure again, and they get the sack. Brenton Cox, the first man in there to bring down Brady Cook. Cox is one of their more dynamic pass rushers. Just comes off the edge, there he is number one. Just beats the right tackle, Connor Wood, and there's nothing for, for Brady Cook to do. A loss of... Yeah, I mean, this is a, a big-time loss, third and 17, and you, you were thinking, hey, maybe this was going to be four-down territory. I don't know. The gotta, Swamp... Gotta get at least 10 back. The Swamp is getting loud on third and 17. A penalty flag, a false start. Prior to the staff, false start. Number seven on the offense, Andre Penalty. Still third down. That's the 
wide receiver love it. I mean, this place is certainly getting loud, as loud as it's been all game. And yeah, making it very difficult for this Missouri offense. As you see the ball start now, we're going to have third and 22. This is what you want to hear out of your homecoming crowd here in Gainesville. Cook will check down. Schrader trying to make something happen. Whoa! Cody Schrader on third and a mile converts the first down. Wow. Third and 22. And he picks up 27 yards. What a play by Schrader. Once he, I, I think he's going to be tackled right here by Perkins. Perkins can't get him on the ground. He cuts back inside. And okay, a little life here for the Tigers. Cody Schrader is like a Disney story. <laughs> they amazing. might make a movie after this guy. An incredible transferring from D2, performing in the SEC now. Cook. Got to throw it away. He'll get out of bounds and actually take a loss yeah, there. Throw it away. I mean, instead of taking the two-yard loss. What you got, Lord? I love that analogy, like a Disney movie. That's absolutely exactly what this is like. And, you know, Coach Drinkwood said, we didn't know we were going to get this out of him. Nothing more, nothing less. Walk on. Obviously, they put him on scholarship, but he says, we're so dang lucky to have him on our football team. And he is what college football is supposed to be about. You know what was cool when we talked to Schrader this week, Lauren, too? He said, every SEC stadium I go to, I'm like living a dream. I grew up watching these stadiums. I can't believe I'm playing here in the swamp. On the ground and Pete is just gobbled up another loss who is it that's your boy Miller you could call the game blind <laughs> seriously I mean just who made the tackle 51 for a negative play look at this just down the line this is why Ventron Miller's gonna play on Sunday it's like what a feel for the position They converted on third and 22. It is third and 15 now. Miller already has 11 tackles today. You gotta pick up half of this. Cook, pressure throwing. He got it, and he got it. Whoa, Barrett Bannister. With the completion, excuse me, Makai Miller. Makai Miller, the freshman. Just his second catch of the season. And this thing hung up in the air for what seemed like an eternity. And I thought for a moment that Jalen Kimber was going to be able to come in there and knock the ball away. But no, it falls into the arms of Miller. And it converted a third and 22 and a third and 15. Now how about this? Look out. Nathaniel Pete. End zone touchdown. Missouri not done yet. Crowd felt like it was on a roller coaster of emotions. You get... Missouri and third and 15 you can pick it up and they, listen they bring the blitz off the left side here Benton and company and then Pete just shows you his speed as he gets vertical untouched into the end zone and that's now a career high day for Nathaniel Pete 117 yards and this is just a one score ball game his career high coming into this game was 115 yards when he was at Stanford. They start this drive on the ground. A good carry on first down by Etienne. He has been a huge spark on offense for Florida today. A gain of 16. It's just a numbers game. I mean, you got five guys on the right side of the line of scrimmage, and you got two on the back side. I mean, there's just two guys, and... You just cut back, there's nobody home. I mean, that's just a, a flat out mismatch. ETN is showing me something today, too. Almost nine yards a pot. Ball spotted at the Florida 41. ETN, another touch. How does he slip through that hole? He is just running through arm tackles. Another big gain, another first down for Florida. It's because the right guard, Osiris Torrance, who's one of the best guards at watch 54, just turned the body on the inside of Darius Robinson and then the cut. 
that is all by by a, a, a right guard who's probably going to play in the National Football League. PFF's top-rated guard in the entire country. Mm. Shout out to the ESPN crew with the great camera work getting through that hole. Under five minutes to play here in Gainesville. Etienne got by the first, but was eventually brought down. Isaac McGuire was there. Isaiah, Mc Isaiah McGuire was there for a stop for a loss. It'll bring up second and long. How about Monday Night Football? 8 Eastern on ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the ESPN app. We got Monday Night F Football featuring AFC West rivalry game between the Raiders, who got their first win of the season Sunday, and Patrick Mahomes and the 3-1 Chiefs. Coverage begins with Monday Night Countdown at 6. Richardson changing the play. Play clock winding down. And Florida will use a timeout. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Oh, my goodness. I am in shock. Penalty flag. False start. 77 offense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. That's the left guard, Ethan White, with the penalty. Well, four minutes until we can dive into the kick. How about that? For Florida, that's actually their first penalty of the ball yeah, game here a, late in the fourth quarter. It's been a quarter. relatively clean game. So under four minutes to play here in the fourth, brings up second and 19 after the penalty. Ball is backed up back into Florida territory, marked at their 48. Richardson, swing pass, Johnson. A short gain will bring up third and long. Now this is the biggest third down of the day for this Tigers defense. As the time is, is windling away, 3.30 to go. You know, a tough call here for, for Florida. You decide to put it in the air with Richardson. You want to keep running that clock and force Missouri to use the timeout. A three for nine on third downs today. Can the Gators convert and keep the clock moving? Good protection for Richardson. He's got all day throwing down the field. That's picked off. Intercepted. Dalen Cardell comes up with the pick. Running on the field was an interception by the defense. Wow. Pearsall is going up to try and catch this at its highest point. And is a really good play by two defenders here. As Richardson's got all day to throw, comes back. Great job by Carlisle, the safety. He's the one that knocks it up in the air. And then, of course, coming down with the football. Under three minutes to play, down by seven. Offense with the ball. How about Brent Cox making that stop? Yeah, this is going to be a design quarterback run. And as soon as Brady Cook steps back to try and take off, but Brent Cox is in the backfield. So backs him up to the 30 after a loss of two. Cook pressured. He is sacked. Omami Ellen with the sack and a timeout from Missouri. Missouri, their first. This will be a 30 second timeout. Wow, what a stop by Princely Omami Allen. C33 off that left edge. The spin move oh, he just on beats Foster man. just beats him. Picked up their fourth sack of the ball game. They're no stranger to third and long. Cook has time, strong throw, has a man. What a catch. They converted on third and long. Makai Miller bailing him out. It's nearly the same play. It's a corner route. And somehow Makai Miller, the freshman, 
This is only the third catch of his career. He is wide open for the first down. A gain of 20. Schrader will take it on the ground, will pound for a gain of four or five. I gotta see take that a catch look again. At number 10 here. He's going to be inside, cuts right out there, and you see it, it looks like the corner, Jason Marshall, is playing 3D zone, and he just gets it turned around, so he's late getting over to the corner round. Missouri at second and six from their own 48. Here comes the blitz. Miller giving pressure, throwing on the run is Cook, and he just gets it away. Yeah, I like the play design defensively. They're going to go with a two-man, which is a trail technique from the corners, and you got two safeties over top, so they're taking away all the inside routes. There was nowhere for Brady Cook to throw the football. Now, you know what happened. He saw number 51 and just got rid of that thing. Oh, I would too. <laughs> is a throwback linebacker. On third downs, look at the number for Brady Cook. My but goodness. The two, but the two picks. That's been the ballgame. Third and six. Pump fakes, brings it down, will tuck it. Oh! He got hammered by Amari Bernie. He had to shake that one off. Timeout Missouri as Brady Cook got popped. 30 second timeout. I mean, he gave all he had, talking about Brady Cook on that run, to get every single inch on this. You know, there's nobody open. He takes off. Bernie almost gets that cleat stuck in the ground as Cook just kind of falls forward into him. Ends up taking a big time shot from Bernie. Brings up fourth and two. Schrader will go out wide to the top of your screen. Empty backfield for Cook. Here comes the blitz. Incomplete. Was looking for Dove. Gators brought the pressure. Trevez Johnson on the coverage. Yeah, they wanted a flag, but I think this is just excellent coverage by Trevez Johnson and you know on a, on a day where the defense is, is played pretty pretty good football this is close does he have him hooked boy that Ooh, is really close that left arm yeah that left arm I think had him hooked this place would have went nuts if they threw a flag oh my goodness is that they, is that P, is that PI I'm a former defensive back so I'm I'm very like I lean towards siding with the defender but that was close. Really, really close. Missouri played Florida in victory formation. Missouri played a really good football game. Just two mistakes by their quarterback. Timeout. Missouri. The, the pick six. Final Ian Relief. It's really cool to see him doing that. He said his goal was to raise $200,000, and he will use a lot of the proceeds and funds that he receives. I know they're happy to have him back. He's been injured a little bit, but he just keeps pushing through. He's not going to miss out on this last season. One more final knee, and that'll do it here at Florida. The Gators got a scare. All right, let's send it down to Lauren with the winning coach. Coach, a 24-17 win, a hard-fought win. How did your team build up some of that momentum in the second half? Well, we knew it was going to be a team effort, right? We knew it would be a combination of offense, defense, and special teams. This group right here is a resilient group. They have been the entire year, right? It's great to see those intangibles show up in a tough, close game. Ton of respect for Missouri and the football team that they have. How did your defense get it done today? Well, we got some takeaways, right? We got a score on defense. We got another critical stop. We bent but didn't break at a lot of times. So very proud of their effort. They kept us in the game. We did just enough on offense. How does it feel to get your first SEC win here at Florida? I'm happy for the staff and these players, right? They do all the work. Uh, we got a group that's trusted us. Um, and I'm very thankful for that. Give your evaluations on Richardson and how he's continued to show some confidence as the season has rolled on. Well, I, I always believe that um, since I've met the kid and watched him as a competitor, he's at his best in the critical moments. The third down throw down here was special. I had a front row seat to that. So uh, he continues to get better every day. He's a product of his work. He's got character. He's humble. Um, and he's a fantastic football player. All right, thanks so much, Coach. Enjoy this one. All right, go Gators.